Hey everyone, Matron here, bringing you another StarCraft II commentary, this time a game between E.G. Idra spawning as the Blue Zerg, one of everyone's favorite Zerg players, and his opponent will be Six Jacks DDE, one of the highest ranked players on the North American ladder, one of the highest ranked Terran on the North American ladder, and I believe this is a ladder game, Idra coming back from Korea, not taking part in the next season of the GSL, I think he's going to come home, rest up, maybe practice a little bit and then play in the North American Star League which is teammate in control and a few of his buddies are putting together uh, everybody has seen all the announcements heard the leaks and I think it's going to be really good for esports especially in North America as it's going to allow us access nightly access prime time we don't have to get up at 4 a.m. 5 a.m. to watch GSL anymore or check out VODs and it's going to show us a lot of our favorite players from Root, EG, Team Liquid and some European, Korean, and uh, Southeast Asia players as well, I'm sure, will be taking part. So make sure you check that out. Stay tuned. Not really sure when it's going to be starting, but I imagine Idra going to be one of the premier players in that league. So we see DD placing his first supply depot back a little bit closer to home here. So he's going to have a delayed wall off. I uh, imagine he's going to throw down some sort of tech lab or reactor on this barracks and maybe use two supply depots to complete this wall off. But if Idra comes with some early lings, he could get into the Terran base. Instead, it looks like he's going to be going for a 15 hatch. So timing that pretty exactly when he gets the 300 minerals. And I wonder when he's going to throw up his pool. Zelnaga, one of the uh, closer maps, a two-player map. So... Getting that hatch first is a little bit of a risk, especially if your opponent goes for some sort of two racks pressure. And Idra has not yet sent over a drone, so he has no clue what DDE is going to be going for. DDE just now sending his SCV across. He will be able to see that the hatchery has gone up. Idra has nicely placed overlords here. He's going to know in case that SCV is going to be trying to put down any sort of bunker. And if any marine starts streaming in here, it looks like the first marine is on its way out for DDE. And he's got it rallied into Idra's natural. Idra back at home does have the spawning pool about two-thirds of the way complete, getting a delayed gas around 18. And it looks like he's got uh, just drones coming out at this point. Not much else you can do in the early going here. DD does have a gas up, so it looks like he's not going to be going for any sort of 2 racks play. Instead, he's getting up a quick factory. So maybe going for a 1-1-1 build here. Or he could be going for some Hellion play as well. He does not have any sort of add-on on this barracks. I imagine he'll want to place one down uh, for that factory if he does decide to go Hellions. And it looks like DD keeping the pressure on, making sure that this SCV is always in line of sight for Idra, threatening that bunker. But there's just the one Marine right now is going to be trying to chase down this lone Overlord. Overlord with just 105 health left. And now Idra doing his best to clean up this SCV. He is not yet working on speed for his lings. He got that delayed gas, opting to go for that fast hatchery first. If we check the income tab, it is 19 SCVs to 17 harvesters. A gas steal for Idra, kind of going to prevent the 1-1-1 build here. I imagine he won't be seeing any sort of cloak banshee play, since the second gas of DD will be quite delayed. And now a reactor going down for that factory, so I imagine we'll be seeing a lot of Hellions. And Idra poking across with these non-speed links. He wants to get some sort of scouting information. He's going to see that Hellion. And he's going to know that the uh, throwing down that Roach Warren, it's about to finish in his main, was the correct choice. He's going to want to get out a few Roaches before this Hellion can get into that natural supply line. Looks like he's just working off of one Queen right now as well. So he's not yet gotten a chance to spread creep between his main and natural. So he's going to need Roaches to defend against this Hellion. Not much on the field for Idra right now. Just a bunch of drones, 21 drones, no lings. And this Hellion is going to have free reign against these drones until these Roaches do pop out. And Idra doing a nice job fending away that Hellion before it was able to do much damage. Idra is going to have to deal with two more Hellions though as they move across the field, but he has a number of Roaches doing his best to rally those Roaches back to his natural. He just has the one Queen at the moment, so he needs to pull back these drones, losing one drone there, and now positioning these Roaches to try to intercept those Hellions as they are by his back door. Doing a nice job spreading out his Roaches here and actually sending a few Roaches on the offensive. So gambling that DDE spent a lot of the minerals on that harass and I'm going to be doing a bit of a counter harass as we follow these Roaches into the base of DDE up in the natural of Idra. It looks like he's trying to fend off the few Hellions there 
and it looks like he Idra positioning these roaches, trying to pick off an SCV or two, doing his own harassment in the natural of DDE. He knows that his opponent does have this fast expand, went for a Hellion into fast expand, and spent a lot of minerals putting down these bunkers as well. So Idra now going to be pulling back with those roaches. It looks like he was able to clean up those Hellions back in his main, and... Does he have out two queens? Yes, two queens, so he's going to be able to get his economy up and running now. It is 28 Harvesters to 26. And it looks like for the moment, Idra is going to be safe. He does have these roaches up. He's got map control, both of the towers, two roaches at each. So no Hellion or Marine is going to be pushing him off these towers at the moment. He's got the backdoor overlord, so he's going to be able to do scouting into the build of DDE. But DDE keeping everything sort of close to home. He's getting up three racks, all with tech labs, so I imagine he's going to be going for some sort of Hellion and Marauder build. The Hellion's very good against Zerglings, and then the Marauder's going to be able to take on those Roaches. So sort of a counter on counter uh, for the Terran player in, with this build. Check the production tab, looks like a Bane, Baneling Nest is going up for Idra. So he may feel like his opponent is going to be transitioning into traditional uh, Marine and Medivac play, which is very popular in the uh, ZVT matchup. Working off of three gas at the moment for Idra. Again, he does have that second queen up, so earlier on he actually just went with one queen. Pretty interesting, but now he's got firm map control, but Six Jacks DD now pushing across with a lot of Marauders. They do not yet have Stim, they're just getting Concussive Shell. So hoping to catch some of these roaches, which do not yet have speed. Uh, midfield, hopefully take them down. And then he's got the Hellions as well. Idra doing his best, getting some Banelings up. The Banelings are going to be good against those Hellions, if he can get them to them. He's got decent creep spread at the moment. He's got a Tumor, and now it looks like the Marauders trying to tank a little bit of damage for the Hellions, doing their best to take down these roaches. The Zerglings coming in late. And DD doing a nice job kiting backwards off that creep. He does not want to engage on creep. Does not want those Banelings to explode on the Hellions. Now it looks like he was able to take down the majority of the forces of Idra. So some late Speedlings coming in here, but those Hellions all still alive. And it looks like a number of Roaches coming out. If they're able to pop out, it looks like Idra may be able to fend this off. But those uh, Hellions getting a lot of kills here. DD going to be pulling those back. Perhaps going to repair them or save them to do some economic damage later on. So kind of a successful attack there. He was able to take down the majority of the Zerg forces. Miss rally there on those Hellions. But now it's a two base Zerg against a two base Terran. If we check the income tab, it is 38 harvesters and to 39 harvesters. But DD does have that mule advantage. Not yet taking down his backdoor rocks. Neither is Idra. So it looks like Idra is going to be going for the gold first here. So he knows that his opponent has put a lot of minerals into the Hellion Harass and into those Marauders. He's done a nice job fending it off for the moment. And coming out with more and more Roaches. If we check the army tabs, it is relatively equal. It's about 1450 to 1500. We see the Hellions moving in for some sort of backdoor Harass. We do not yet see the Blue Flame. So he's continued to produce Hellions off this factory with the reactor. He has not yet landed on a tech lab. And it looks like these Hellions are going to come in, going to fry a lot of drones here. Taking down at least five or six drones. If we check the income tab, it is 44 to 35. And now Idra is going to have to try to protect his back door. DDA is taking back map control. He has this one tower and Idra does not have the second. And DD doing a nice job sort of setting the pace. But now Idra going to be pushing out, being very aggressive with these Banelings and these Roaches. DD is going to have to do something with those Hellions, either harass and pull Idra back to his natural, or perhaps bring them back to defend against this pretty strangely timed attack by Idra. Idra doing his best to wrestle back map control. He's got the middle of the map now. He's got all these Banelings. They're hoping to find these Hellions. They do have Baneling speed, but there's no creep quite yet. Looks like they are going to be able to find those Hellions a little bit here. The stim going up on those marauders, so they're going to try to chew through these roaches, but the roaches just might be too many at this point. A few zerglings in there as well. And checking out the army, it is still pretty even, 1350 to 1400. The income tab, though, DD is taking quite the advantage. He's got those mules, he's gotten up an armory, so getting an upgrade for the vehicles. He's going to be going quite mech heavy here, and he's getting a missile turret as well. We see the hellions squeezing in here. Idra does not have that tower, so the Hellions are going to be able to make it up into the main. Let's see how many of these uh, drones they're going to be able to take down. 
44 drones at the moment. Those Hellions trying to deal with these Zerglings first and foremost. If they are able to make it in the mineral line, they can do a lot of damage. These Queens doing their best along with those Zerglings to get us around on those Hellions, but they are not able to. Now these Hellions are going to be taking down a lot of drones here. It looks like four drones going down, five drones. So not as effective as it could have been, and we see a lot more drones coming out for Idra, replacing those uh, right away. He knows his opponent's not going to be able to push out and attack uh, after he is throwing away all these Hellions. So continuing to drone up, he does have the gold at the moment. So one base ahead of his Terran opponent, which is something you definitely want to do as Zerg. So more Hellions moving out for DDE. So very harass heavy, but he's just not been able to hurt the economy of Idra too badly. So we see 56 Harvesters to 49. The army counting station, it is still pretty even. Checking the production tab, it looks like a Spire coming up for Idra along with a few more of those Banelings. He has not yet taken down these destructible rocks. I like that. It's a good move. It's not going to open up any more attack paths for these Hellions. And now he's going to be hunting these down, hoping to take them out with these Roaches. May be able to take that down one more shot. So the Hellion getting a little too close there and going down. Back in the base of DDE, he's set up two more factories, so he is going to be going quite mech heavy. He's finishing up Siege Tech, and Siege Tank's going to be very good against those armored roaches, doing bonus damage in Siege mode to armor. And he's got a Thor as well, so he's ready for the tech switch of Idra. Idra's got eight mutas on the way, and a few Thors are going to be all that it takes to defend against those mutas, along with a missile turret or two in the mineral line. So right now the Thor just staying in the base, so he's going to be able to defend against anything, but DD still throwing away these Hellions, but he is able to get a few of those drones now that he does have Blue Flame, so continuing to harass Idra, and Idra doing a nice job dealing with it, but it is affecting his macro quite a bit. We'd see Idra uh, much higher at this point in a normal game, checking the APM of both players, DD at 260, Idra at 190, so these guys are blazing fast. The Thor in position, intercepting those Mutalisks, and Idra knows that he has to pull back DD getting up another command center, so it looks like he's going to be aiming to take the gold. If he is able to take the gold, lay down some of those uh, those mules, he could rocket ahead here in the economy. If we check it out, it's 58 to 57. Idra moving in here with these mutos once again, perhaps into the main, hoping to do a bit of damage. But it looks like a Thor, a mobile turret, is in position already, doing bonus damage against those light mutalisks. So anytime you're a Zerg player and you see the Thor, you're going to get out of there very quickly unless you are able to Magic Box. But with that few Mutas, the Magic Box is going to be pretty ineffective. You're going to lose more Mutas than it's really worth. But he is getting more and more Mutas now. Four more coming out. If we check the unit counting station, it is 18 Mutas right now. So quite a flock, but he also has these Roaches, Banelings, and Zerglings. So a pretty interesting mix here. Trying to do a little bit of harassment but a Thor in position by that gold, and he is also taking his fourth. He has not yet taken down the rocks yet, and does own both these towers, so he's got pretty good map control. If we check the view of both players, DD sacrificing a unit to try to see what sort of build his opponent's going for. He's seeing the potpourri of units, the Zerglings, the Banelings, and the Roaches. Checking the production tab, it looks like we have vehicle weapons level two coming out for DD, along with a few more Hellions and Thors, so these Blue Flame Hellions going to be a reaction to these Zerglings that he just saw by the tower. Moving in here with these Marauders, hoping to lighten up the uh, the Roach count there. And now drawing his Zerg player back into the Missile Turrets and the Thor, but just not enough Thors. Idra doing a nice job Magic Boxing these Thors, able to take down two of them here. And now able to take down the Missile Turrets as well. No Marines on the field, so DDE just has a lot of tanks here and a lot of Marauders, they were able to clean up all the ground forces of Idra, but Idra is going to be left unchecked with these Mutalisks, and Mutalisks, excuse me, and it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Thor moving out from the main as DD has added a few more missile turrets. A Marauder stimming in there, trying to check the army of Idra. Idra has his army a little bit fair, or farther back now, and more and more Mutas coming out. If we check the unit counting station, still 18, so lost a few in that encounter to the Thors. Quickly replaced them. And now Didi probably needs to get a few more Thors out here or some Marines before he tries to take on these Mutas. These 18 Mutas are going to be able to take down these Thors very quickly. More and more Mutas coming out as we see another three being built at the moment. And these Mutas are going to be able to clean up the Thors nicely and then go right for the tanks here. The Blue Flame Hellions going to be ripping through these Zerglings for Idra. So Idra just has a lot of Hellion or a lot of Mutas on the field now, and he is going to be able to clean this up, but not before DD is possibly going to be able to take down this hatchery. 
the Marauder's doing a lot of damage to those, uh, to the armored hatchery there. And it looks like Idra is able to clean up the majority of the units. DDE's army, much smaller than Idra's, and trying to find some uh, more drones to roast here with these Blue Flame Hellions. But the flock of Mutas now coming in, going to be able to clean this up nicely. Idra does have the one attack upgrade for those Mutas, expanding to the eastern position here as well. So DDE repairing up this planetary fortress. He's got a lot more missile charts on the way, and I imagine he's going to want to get out a few more Thors, three on the way actually. So it looks like he's uh, got these Thors here. They are going to be taking on these Mutalisks. So the Mutalisks tightly packed there are going to not do very good against those Thors. The Thors with the two upgrades, so they're going to be doing the 16 damage to light armor, or to the light units times four attacks. So that's a lot of damage being done, 64 per, vo per volley of shots. Now Idris still has map control here, he's got these towers, he's got the flock of mutas, he knows that his opponent has to be very defensive. But DD has a very strong position here as well with the planetary fortress, with the missile turrets, as the mutas going right around all of that, trying to take out some free supply depots. He also has the engineering bay, does not have any of the infantry weapons or armor upgrades at the moment. Again, he doesn't have very many uh, marines on the field at all. It is mostly mech, so he's going to try to get out a lot of Thors here before he engages this ball of mutas. Thor is not very good without marine, stim marine help, uh, if there are not enough of them. It looks like DD does have five Thors at the moment, and a few more on the way. He's also getting the Terran vehicle weapon level three, and moving to try to take his fourth Idra poking in here going to be taking on this refinery. The missile turret's a little bit out of position, but the Thor is coming from that third and going to ward away those Mutalists pretty easily. The Roaches of Idra in position here to, to defend against this any sort of attack here by DDE. So he's got this hatchery up and running. It is 67 harvesters to 55. Idra's got a few spine crawlers in place as well to try to defend against Blue Flame Hellions. If we check the unit counting station, it is 23 Mutas, 24 Roaches. Uh, DDE at the moment has those seven Thors. He's got seven tanks, and he's got just three Hellions, so not very much in the way of army. And it's very immobile as well. Idra has those Speedlings. He's got the Mulus as well, taking on the tower there and just making his opponent know that he's there. Perhaps shift around his Thors just a little bit. And kind of, uh, you're forced to keep your Thors a little bit spread out since the mutas are so mobile. So if the mutas are able to find one Thor, they can magic box very easily, able to take down that missile turret, and DDE doing his best to get in position here to defend against these mutas, but very difficult for him. And Idra has taken the harvester lead 65 to 52. Now these roaches pushing down here, they've got 2-0 armor upgrades, and it looks like he's gonna try to take on these Thors at the same time as he's harassing this gold. So hoping to take out a few of those uh, SCVs, but the high ground siege tanks now doing 60 damage to those roaches. Roaches just with 145 health, all of those pretty much evaporated, and Idra pulling back. He has not yet replaced the gold. And a lot of drones going down for these Hellions. That one just had seven kills before it went down. So DD doing his own economic damage. It is 56 drones to 44. And now it looks like the Ultra Cavern and the Greater Spire coming out for Idra. So the game's gotten to a point where Tier 3 is a viable option for the Zerg player. He's got a lot of mutas here, almost more than a page. It looks like 27 mutas. He's not able to do, do, do too much damage to the main thus far. It looks like he might be choosing this moment to push in on these missile turrets, try to really affect the production structures of DDE. It looks like he's going to be taking on this factory. Again, DD at this point can either try to defend, but this Thor is very slow. It looks like instead he's going to be pushing out. So Idra drawing him across here, sieging up in the middle, now needs to pull back with these roaches. The Marauders and the Hellions controlling the action in the front. The Hellions now doing 30 damage to light, so practically one-shotting the Zerglings. And a lot of Thors here on the field. A row and a half, so 12 Thors. Now 14 Thors. It looks like a few are back on defense. Idra has a lot of mutas here, so he's going to have to do a nice job magic boxing, but I imagine with all these stores on the field, he's not going to be able to do. He may be losing this expansion. So Idra, we're kind of running out of options. If we check the uh, army tab, it is 7,300 7, to 3,600. On the way for Idra is going to be six Broodlords, though. 
So those are going to be very good against the Thoros. Thoros doing bonus damage to light, but those Broodlords are armored units. And they have that one natural armor. So now pushing across the field, if we check the army tab, it is 6750 to 6350. So with those Broodlords quickly evening up the game, and a lot of Thors here. Idra giving an LOL, not really sure why, as it looks like DDE has sieged up here. And trying to come in here with all of these Zerglings from the back door, get a surround on these Thors. <laughs> Throwing up the uh, bars there, can't really see anything. But trying to take down these Thors with the back door Zerglings and a few Roaches. The Hydras as well, or excuse me, the Mutas as well. Trying to focus down all these Thors. It looks like there's 14 Thors going down to the Zerg forces. 3400 to 1900 in the way of army. These Broodlords doing a lot of good damage, not really going down, and they're going to be able to clean up the mech army of his opponent here. Not really sure what Idris talking about at this point, but DD did a very good job there, actually giving the GG. Uh, did a very good job of getting very high in the army counting station, and once those Broodlords popped out, uh, Idra got a nice surround. He kind of got those Thors up against the wall here and was able to do a nice job from behind. He took down all those siege tanks with the Broodlords, was able, able to get a surround, and I'm not sure how those Mutas really survived. Those Thors had the three attack upgrade, but a decent magic box. Not a lot of splash damage was being done. In the early game, we saw both players go for some income harass. DD doing a very nice job, but eventually Idra was able to scrap his way to a number of bases and up to tier 3, and eventually able to take this one. It was in doubt for just a few moments there when DD had that huge mech army, but in the end, Idra was able to take it in a pretty good game. Uh, this was not a ladder game, as I did say. I believe it was game 6 of some series that these two did play. I saw a few other games between them. Uh, they weren't very good to cast, so I just decided to cast this nice big macro game. Idra getting up to tier 3 there. DD showing some nice play with the Hellions uh, and that mech. But eventually, Idra, the player just came back from Korea, able to take down DD, one of the top players on the North American ladder. Hopefully we'll see both these players in the North American Star League, so check that out in the future. If you're looking for more StarCraft 2 action, make sure to subscribe to my channel, MatronStarCraft at youtube.com. Thanks for watching this one. Take care.